Okay. Graham, uh, the purpose of the interview today, I'd like to ask you some questions formally about an incident that happened yesterday, uh, Thursday the 21st of July 2011, at the Rockhampton Airport, um, around about 9.40 to 10 a.m. this incident occurred where the airport grounds was unlawfully entered into and uh, Australian Defence Force helicopter was damaged um, by a person I know to be Brian Law. But before we get into all that sort of stuff, um, there's some formal side to this interview I need to do. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do now is provide you with your cautions and warnings. Um, all right, I'd just like to get a bit of background info on yourself. Where were you born? <coughs> I was born in Essendon, Victoria, in 1942. I went to Essendon State School for six years. I went to Essendon High School for six years. I had a very stable upbringing <laughs> in Essendon. I want to say that um, I've been a long-time peace activist from the university days. Uh, Non-violent peace activist has occupied a large part of my life. And where I'm coming from now is a Buddhist perspective that says, hatred cannot cure hatred, only love can cure hatred. So I'm working to end the wars at this time. I think it's an outrageous situation we've got ourselves into in the US alliance. Ten years of war in Afghanistan, nothing's been gained. 28 Australian lives have been lost, over 50 have been maimed and probably thousands of soldiers and families of soldiers will be suffering post-traumatic stress disorder brought on by these wars. It's a disaster. We have politicians that aren't responding to the people. I think the stats something like 68% of Australians at this time are against the war. 90%, 92% of politicians are for it. A huge disjunction. How can we turn this around when the mass media is backing the war? We can only do it by individual actions of conscience. So I came to Rockhampton um, to organise resistance to the war games as a way of drawing attention to this ongoing war and the toxic, baleful influence of the US alliance. In the course of this organising, I've met Margaret Pistorius and Brian Law and many others um, interested in working um, for peace in these times and talking strategies for working for peace. I've got to say that I great admire of Brian Law's determination and his courage. Um, uh, part of my path, my Buddhist path, is helpfulness. I try to help people best I can. That's my service for future generations. And um, when Brian explained uh, his strategy, um, I was impressed. And uh, I came and stayed at uh, 22 Buckle Street, the house that was rented by Brian and Margaret, um, to be an organising base, and had been working closely with Brian. Brian made clear his intention to plough share a helicopter. Because of my Christian background, I understand the teaching of Isaiah about everyone needs the the bow and victory in peace and unafraid, into ploughshares, and in, in their swords into ploughshares they will beat. Yeah? And that's what we've got to do, we've got to have peace in this time. We've got to turn the military budget into productive budget for peace. Brian made his position clear, his intention clear, uh, that he's going to do this. He didn't hide it from anyone. Um, it was a symbolic action. I I suggested him, well, if you're going to damage a, a um, helicopter, why not an incendiary device and burn it to the ground so there's no recovery? And Brian said, you've missed the point, Graham. It's not about destroying it. It's about the symbolic act of beating it into a plowshare. So basically what he's on about is theatre, not violence. No. Making a dramatic point that will catch the imagination of the television audiences of Australia and inspire future generations of activists. And that ground I chose to stand beside him. He's been very frail, his health has been very frail, he couldn't do it alone. He asked me for help, I said I'd help him best I could. And that help turned out to be being a driver 
and a recorder. Take the photographs, get him to the, the, um, to the fence, because he couldn't do it himself, he couldn't ride across the town on his bicycle, and um, make sure the event was recorded. So that's what I did basically yesterday. So this is an action, uh, how can I say, it's, it's, no one was harmed. It's like harmlessness is what we're doing. A war machine was damaged, and let's say these machines, these helicopters. What is it, a Tiger helicopter or was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tiger. <coughs> these are not being used for the defence of Australia. They are being used in Afghanistan to kill innocent civilians. That's the bitter truth. Really. We have an army that claims to be defending Australia, but in fact is taking out taxes and using them to buy war machines that kill innocent civilians in a foreign country that has done no harm to us. So hats off to Brian for his action yesterday. It was spectacular. Uh, well done. I'm proud to say I stood beside him as a friend. No, so you're shaking. Are you cold? <laughs> um, I'm not totally familiar with the Plowshare action. You, you said that it's a reference to Isaiah. Uh, from the, it's a biblical reference, is yes, that right? Yeah, about beating swords into Plowshares. Yeah, using farming tools, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, hammers. Yeah. Hammers, yeah. That's the idea. That's the image. Okay. Um, and, yeah, I, I spoke with... Brian Law yesterday, and he spoke about the Plowshares action as well. These have a fine tradition, yeah, where someone does a symbolic act, destroys a bit of, you know, damages a bit of hardware, and it leads to a court case mm. and a hearing and a jury. And a number of these <laughs> revolt, you know, the, the jury is said not guilty. You know. It focuses conscience on mm. the issue. Mm. Okay. Um, and then you started talking about um, specifically the actions yesterday, but before that you said that Brian, he spoke to you of his intentions and he, he made them clear to you, um, but he also outlined there was a symbolic act of the theatre, not violence, mm -hmm. um, but, but you said to him, why not you know, burn it totally, and he corrected you and said, no, this is what we mm -hmm. should do, it's symbolic, you know, mm -hmm. etc. Um, so I'm taking that to mean that there was a plan in place for yesterday. Well... <laughs> The plan was in the front page of the newspaper in the morning bulletin. Brian was going to enter the base. I mean, I did a TV thing where he held up a pair of wire cutters and said, we're going to enter the base mm -hmm. and hammer on a ploughshare helicopter. That's the plan. Mm 